looking at text to world connections through the book Good Night, Mr. Tom by Michelle Majorine. Yes, said Tom bluntly on opening the front door. What do you want? A harassed middle-aged woman in a green coat and felt hat stood on his step. He glanced at the armband on her sleeve. She gave him an awkward smile. I'm the building officer of this area, she began. Oh, yes, and what's that got to do with me? She flushed slightly. Well, Mr. Mr. Oakley, Thomas Oakley. Ah, thank you, Mr. Oakley. She paused and took a deep breath. Mr. Oakley, with the declaration of wars imminent, Tom waved his hand. I knows all that. Get to the point. What do you want? He noticed a small boy at her side. It's him I've come about, she said. I'm on my way to the village hall with the others. What others? She stepped to one side. Behind a large iron gate, which stood at the end of the graveyard, were a small group of children. Many of them were filthy and very poorly clad. Only a handful had a blazer or coat. They all looked bewildered and exhausted. One tiny, dark-haired girl in the front was hanging firmly onto a new teddy bear. The woman touched the boy at her side and pushed him forward. There's no need to tell me, said Tom. It's obligatory and it's for the war effort. You're entitled to choose your child, you know, began the woman apologetically. Tom gave a snort. But, she continued, his mother wants him to be with someone who's religious or near a church. She was quite adamant. She said she would only let him be evacuated if he was. Was what? asked Tom impatiently. Near a church. Tom took a second look at the child. The boy was thin and sickly looking, pale with limp, sandy hair and dull gray eyes. His name is Willie, said the woman. Willie, who had been staring at the ground, looked up. Round his neck, hanging from a piece of string, was a cardboard label. It read, William Beach. Tom glared at Willie. You best come in, he said abruptly. The woman gave a relieved smile. Thank you so much, she said, and she backed quickly away and hurried down the path toward the other children. Willie watched her go. Unlike the United States, England had a very different World War II. And for one thing, they had a fear of bombing of London at all times. So to keep their children safer, kids were sent out into the country. So you see here, they're all labeled. They're with their teachers, not their parents. And they were sent to live with multiple people out in the country. So they could end up at a farm. They could end up at a shelter. Check out the little boxes they're all carrying. Those are gas masks. Things were that scary then. The connections between these two texts start with our three column notes. In our first column, I've looked at the text. I've pulled three things from the text. Next, I've pulled three facts from World War II, specifically in England, and then I've started making connections. Let's look at what we've got. In Goodnight, Mr. Tom, right away in our selection, the local billeting officer brings a small group of kids into town, and Thomas Oakley is, the, is to house Willie Beach. He's not very happy about it. Next, the billeting officer tells Mr. Oakley that Mrs. Beach only allowed Willie to be evacuated if he's allowed to live with religious people or next to a church. And finally, Willie is wearing a piece of cardboard with his name printed on it and it's tied around his neck. All right, so real world. Of course, this is historical fiction, so the author has had an opportunity to look back at things that actually happened and work them into her story. So here we have. London children were evacuated to the countryside, and locals were obligated to house, feed, and clothe the kids. Now, if they got lucky, sometimes a parent would send money along, but not always. Also consider that if you are a new mommy, um, either not yet had your child or still nursing, you were coming to live out in the countryside too, and someone was going to have to, have to house you also. Second thing. Uh, many parents didn't want their kids to be evacuated and would only allow them to go under certain circumstances. Often, um, the kids were brought back immediately. The bombing didn't start right after the kids were evacuated, but when it did, um, unfortunately, the Germans did target schools and the children that were back in the countryside um, were safe. Next, um, our final bit, because of their ages, some kids couldn't say their names or didn't know their last name. I mean, think about a small child that's lost in the grocery store. What are they yelling? Mommy! That's all you get out of them. 
to keep the confusion down, because remember they're just piling kids onto trains and taking them out to some little town, they put the kids' names and their schools around their neck. Now, if you and I were in this situation, I would be evacuated with you. I would be responsible for keeping up with you. Um, the good news is, as you are of a certain age, your job would be a little bit different. You would probably be sent into a house where you would be either caring for people's children, maybe you'd be helping in the school, you could be helping in the war effort. In fact, some of you gentlemen would probably have started planning to lie about your age and go to war. Um, young ladies, of course, remember that this war is the first time that women are able to step up into factory jobs, and they did so beyond what had been gender roles this time. But the kids had a different experience. So let's go ahead and make some connections between these two. The first uh, row we've got there, we're talking about housing the kids. Um, we can see that Mr. Oakley is not pleased, and that was very common. I mean, think about it. How would you feel if somebody knocked on your front door, you don't know who they are, and informs you that you gotta take care of this eight-year-old, which is exactly what's happened to Mr. Oakley. So people don't like having responsibilities forced upon them by their government. And that's pretty true, I would feel. Next, um, connecting between Mrs. Beach and her rules about Willie and how other parents felt about their children being evacuated. Um, most parents never want to be separated for their from their children, even if it's for the kids' safety. And think about it, that's pretty true. We want to keep our family safe. Maybe you and your friends have joked about the zombie apocalypse. And I don't know about you, but my immediately goal is to get my family together to save myself from the hordes of the undead. All right, last connection we're making between Goodnight Mr. Tom and the World War II in England. Um, we got those cardboard signs. You saw some of them in our little video there. Um, and let's think about this. Um, small kids don't remember their name. Small kids get lost. Um, this is a city these children have never been in. So to keep kids safe and speediness of the uh, housing. Think about the last time you had to register for something. Softball camp or um, picking up tickets for the uh, play. We get organized. It keeps things going faster. People don't get into a panic and start fighting over who was next in line. They did the same thing with the kids. Line up. We do this. We like structure. We like organization as humans. And for kids' safety, it seemed to be the best. This is my connection to actual world events and a text. If you have questions, by all means, please contact one of us. That's why we're here.